and phosphorus and kidney disease because there's a lot. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, Jesse Anna Seville here. I'm from the kidneyrd.com. We're a group of private dietitians that uh, help people with kidney disease preserve their kidney function. And today and this whole week, we are gonna bust through some big, big myths around phosphorus and talk about what you need to do to eat a healthy kidney diet and how phosphorus is involved and what you need to do. So first off, what is phosphorus? Phosphorus is a naturally occurring mineral in our foods. Uh, it's used to help our bones become hard and it's used for energy cycles and a whole bunch of other functions throughout the body. So it is a necessary nutrient. However, it is definitely a concern for kidney disease. And the question is why? Why does phosphorus show up on all the don't eat lists for kidney disease? Here is what happens. For people at later stage kidney disease and Probably in the research, it shows a lot earlier in kidney disease, you can have too much phosphorus build up in your bones. Your kidneys produce some hormones and are involved in a lot of different things to help your body balance the amount of phosphorus in your body. So what happens is you end up having a little bit extra phosphorus in your blood. Sorry, I think I said in your bones, a little bit extra phosphorus in your blood and that combines with calcium. Sometimes it needs to draw calcium from your bones, but it combines with calcium and those phosphorus and calcium together, they form little crystals. Now these crystals have to go somewhere. They're circulating around in your blood and then they need to go somewhere. And where they usually go, where they deposit and kind of sit when they're tired of floating around is in soft tissues. Some of the biggest soft tissues that are a major concern are your blood vessels. So if you have these nice, soft, flexible blood vessels, and then they start getting a lot of calcium phosphorus crystals in them, now you get hard blood vessels that cannot contract, um, it cannot expand and contract as they need to. Um, so this is a really, really important piece with phosphorus and calcium. So the next question is, when do you need to worry about phosphorus? Here's the thing. Before stage four or stage five, so early on in kidney disease, you are not going to see your phosphorus levels on your blood results be significantly elevated most of the time. Even people that are stage five or heading on to dialysis, sometimes you don't even see the phosphorus levels elevated at that point. Our body is really, really good at how it compensates with phosphorus levels to get to where they need to be to stay in a nice spot. However, that does not mean that there's not damage going on from phosphorus intake early on. Um, anyways, it's quite a complex cycle. So the main thing, if you have early stage kidney disease, is not worrying about beans and nuts and whole grains. The type of phosphorus in those is called or organic phosphates or naturally occurring phosphates, and it is bound up in something called phytates or the fiber of the phosphorus. You don't absorb all of it, and most of the nutrients that you get from those other really healthy foods are enough to compensate for the extra phosphorus you might get from these whole grain nutritious foods. Um, the ones that you need to worry about the most are the chemical phosphates or the inorganic phosphates that are added to our food supply. That's the number one place you have to watch out for. So how do you know where these phosphates are? Uh, you can't look on the nutrition facts and look down, you know, calories, protein, fat, vitamin C, vitamin A, phosphorus, and then know if it has phosphorus. It's not going to show up there hardly ever. The place that you need to look for is in the ingredients. In the ingredients, all you have to look for are four letters, P-H-O-S, phos. It's going to be embedded in kind of some big words like hexametaphosphate or phosphoric acid. But if you see the letters P-H-O-S, in the ingredients of any food that you buy, that's a food that you should put back on the shelf and find a substitute for it instead. What that means is that they've added a chemical phosphate or inorganic phosphate to that food. There's a lot of different reasons we use them in our food supply. It can be as an anti-caking agent, so you'll see it in powdered drink mixes. You'll see phos added. Sometimes it's added as a flavor. Uh, that's why cola and Pepsi, they have phosphoric acid in it. It's a flavor. Uses a preservative and a lot of different things. But 
if you see PHOS, no matter what stage of kidney disease you are, even for people that don't have kidney disease, it's a good idea to put those foods back on the shelf. You don't need that extra phosphorus and you definitely don't need that type of phosphates, the chemical phosphates or the inorganic phosphates. Our body absorbs a hundred percent of those type of phosphorus, uh, those type of phosphates. And so it's one that you definitely want to watch out for. So um, in summary, phosphorus, naturally occurring mineral. You're going to see it uh, in a lot of different foods. The bad guys that get put on a lot of lists that don't need to be there are whole grains, nuts, and um, uh, beans. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Other things like dairy and heavy doses of meat also have a lot of phosphorus, which is more absorbed than those plant-based sources. Um, but again, we're going to talk about the food tomorrow, so don't worry about that. It's naturally occurring. So we do need phosphorus in our diet. No is not better than low. That's what I always say. No is not better than low. It's a concern because it phosphorus and calcium combine to make crystals. And those crystals can make your soft tissues in your body become hard. And that puts you at increased risk for heart disease. Uh, number three is uh, look how you know which phosphorus um, how you know which phosphorus to watch out for. And all you have to do is look for PHOS on the ingredients in a food, and that will tell you that you need to find a different food. Uh, very, very simple. That's the number one thing you need to do with phosphorus is just look for the PHOS on the ingredients in your labels and then find a different food. Okay, so that is it for today. We're gonna to talk, really dig into the phosphorus of food and clarify some huge myths there um, tomorrow. Uh, so please come back and join us here on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can search for us at hashtag thekidneyrv.com. We have lots of great resources on our website for people. And you can also schedule a free discovery call with us to see how you can preserve your kidney health, uh, get a good strategy in place and see what we can do to help you out with that. Anyways, that's it for now. Bye-bye.